The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today, I have um, some guest speakers you can see on this uh, front page here. Um, I will, as we turn it over and other people start presenting, I'll ask them to just give a little uh, bit of their biography so I won't speak with them. Uh, to start off, I'd like to make sure that everybody that's on the call knows how to ask your questions and get them answered. Uh, so we are going to take questions during the session. If I can, uh, once Dave Lorenzo starts speaking, I will put myself on mute and we'll stay in the background and kind of watch as a moderator. Uh, I will try to answer questions if I can through the questions panel on your screen. Uh, if um, I can't, Dave's given me permission to interrupt him. We'll try to answer those as we go. So everybody should see that go to webinar control panel somewhere on the right side of your screen, probably where my mouse is circling. There's a vertical toolbar that hangs off the side of that. And you should see a hand icon at the bottom. Uh, that's the way to virtually raise your hand during the session. And I like to ask everybody to go ahead and raise your hand if you're hearing me. That just makes sure that uh, my microphone is working. Cool. I see those hands. Thank you for that. So if you have a question, you've got a microphone, you can raise your hand using that button. Uh, once I see it, I can unmute your microphone and we can talk back and forth and get your question answered. There's also a question section on that panel. You can type in your question there. Like I said, if I see it, I will do my best to answer it. Um, and if not, I'll interrupt and we'll try to get that answered. So I'm going to put everybody's hands down from my side. Um, that way, if I see them go back up, I'll know you've got a question about the material. So this webinar today is a little different from what I typically do um, on the regular monthly webinar series. Uh, we have a lot of new folks on the call, so I'll just take a quick second to introduce myself. Um, my name is Jennifer Devona. I do business as That Cad Girl. I'm based out of the Raleigh, North Carolina area. area. I am a Carlson reseller. But I have a long history starting way back in the day. I uh, got a degree in land surveying, um, but started off in DCA and AutoCAD 9, I think. Uh, moved on to soft desk and land desktop, civil 3D. I worked for an Autodesk reseller as a civil 3D certified in, uh, implementation certified expert for a while. And when I went on my own, I became a Carlson reseller. It just, it was the best thing for my clients, uh, for those I was supporting as an independent CAD manager and for various other reasons. Um, but I am independent. And at this point, I truly believe that Carlson uh, and their offerings are the best things for my clients. And, um, you know, if that ever changes, I will let you know. But again, since we've got some new people on the call, just again, um, before I turn this over to Dave Lorenzo, a little bit about Carlson Software. Again, those guys are on the call today too, so they can answer for themselves as well. Uh, the Carlson Software is a developer of specialized vertical software pro programs for land development professionals. That includes land surveying and civil engineering, uh, mining, you know, machine control on the construction side, and many others. They also are independent. They develop on top of various CAD platforms. Um, today, that's going to be primarily IntelliCAD and AutoCAD for the Office software. Some of their top advantages, you know, this goes for me. It goes for Carlson as well, privately owned, independent. So the choices they make are with the customer in mind as well. That helps you make the best decisions for your business. They currently, again, um, run their office software, give you a choice of AutoCAD or IntelliCAD. Carlson's 2020 is the current version. It runs on top of anything that's got a full AutoCAD underneath it, um, or they give you IntelliCAD. Okay? So what are the advantages to IntelliCAD? So, you know, one thing, the way I describe it, and Dave may 
uh, correct me on this, I kind of think about it as a generic version of AutoCAD, but it is more like a full version of AutoCAD as opposed to an AutoCAD LT. So a little bit of the misconception out there is that um, a DWG file, for those of you like me who have a long history in AutoCAD, you think that DWG equals AutoCAD, and, and that's not the case. A DWG file is just a DWG file is just a DWG file. So many different programs can create a DWG file. Um, AutoCAD can do it, and IntelliCAD does it. When you're working in IntelliCAD, you're working natively in a DWG file. You don't have to import, you don't have to export to work with others, you don't have to convert anything. Now, uh, you will get this, I always bring this up, the little dialog box that's on my screen shows you what Autodesk will say if you open up a DWG that's been created in anything other than AutoCAD or an Autodesk product. This is just a little bit of a fear factor. Um, you can turn this off, and I recommend that you do, but it's just a DWG file. The um, comparison I would use is that if you're working in AutoCAD, you can plot to a PDF. Well, guess what? A PDF is, we tend to think of Adobe, okay? It's kind of the same principle here. That would be like creating a PDF from your AutoCAD, and every time you open it in Adobe Acrobat or Reader, it says, ooh, be careful. This is a PDF file that was not created by Adobe. Are you sure? Well, of course. So don't be scared if you get this message opening something. It doesn't mean anything. Um, but just to push that a little bit, if you're working in IntelliCAD, you'll be able to use all the files you're in, uh, accustomed to, DWG, your templates, DWT files, your CUI, your PGPs, list files, more. Um, Carlson still offers, again, you're going to buy your IntelliCAD or your Carlson product with IntelliCAD through Carlson, so they offer the flexible block licensing. You're still going to get perpetual licenses. You're still going to be able to do network licenses to kind of save yourself some money. Um, each license permits the installation on two different computers for your personal use, so office computer and field computer or so on. Uh, Carlson doesn't force you to upgrade. They're going to continue to support all the products. Uh, these days, if anything forces you to upgrade, it's going to be your Windows, right? Uh, Carlson offers free tech support. If you purchase from me, you're going to have me as a backup option. And again, this makes sure that Carlson and I stay in touch with the customers. Uh, make sure we get that input for new features or problem areas. Anything Carlson creates are basic CAD entities, so you don't have, uh, for those of us in land development, you get civil 3D proprietary objects. Carlson doesn't create those things. Um, they want to make sure that any files you create are going to be able to be used by anybody and everybody, but they can also read in, um, and Telecad is kind of a platform that does that, reading in all those civil 3D objects. So. Uh, they're able to do that you know, pretty flawlessly these days. And then, again, Carlson plays well with others. They don't want to lock you into Carlson. They want you to stay with them uh, because you like it, because it works for you. So they're going to allow you to import and export from pretty much anything else. And then the cost, I'm just going to kind of fly through this just a little bit. Um, Carlson has just... Uh, program called iCAD, so this would be very similar to an AutoCAD. Um, retail price is $5.95. Any Carlson reseller can sell that to you. Um, you can buy it through Carlson. If you work through a dealer like myself, you'll probably may get a discount. You may get some extra bonuses uh, for training or whatever. And then just Again, retail pricing of the different vertical products that Carlson builds that'll work on top of IntelliCAD or your CAD. So, real quick here. And then I just want to mention some recent webinars. Autodesk uh, made some big changes to their network licensing. Um, so, we had an Autodesk reseller do a webinar on July 22nd. So, if you're interested in going back and seeing that recording, 
on July 31st. I actually tried and crashed and burned uh, doing an online webinar for Carlson Software. It was about two hours long, but my computer just froze up on me about an hour and a half in. Um, but I did go back and re-record that, so that recording's available. And then we'll make today's recording available as well. Uh, I'll probably put all of those all together in one post on my website uh, sometime today or tomorrow. With that, I'm done talking. Um, so I am going to turn this over to Dave Lorenzo. Uh, again, I'll ask him to do a little bit of an introduction of himself. And I'm going to mute myself. Uh, Dave, you're still muted. And then, all right, so we're seeing your screen, um, but we're seeing your back end of your PowerPoint. Okay, uh, can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay. Great. Hello, everyone. My name is David Lorenzo, and I'm the president of the IntelliCAD Technology Consortium. I'm kind of a, I guess I would call myself a CAD graybeard. I've been doing this stuff since like 1979. Uh, started off um, with uh, old mainframe systems, uh, worked with uh, as an AutoCAD reseller and third-party developer for like 14 years. Uh, one of my solutions was acquired by a company called Visio. So I ended up working with Visio Corporation, who was later acquired by Microsoft. So I worked for those companies for a while, where I worked on IntelliCAD and Visio, uh, the diagramming product. Uh, and then I came to join the IntelliCAD Technology Consortium in 2004, and have been working here ever since, um, uh, and actually enjoying it quite a bit. So I've um, got a few slides here to go through with you. Uh, give you kind of a brief history of IntelliCAD. I'll try to you know, blast through these slides pretty quickly so we can get on to actually taking a look at the product. So hey, we're Dave, I'm not sure if you're showing the right, if you have more than one monitor. We're seeing um, PowerPoint program, not the... Oh, you're seeing what? Um, we're, there you go, that's what we Oh, okay, thank you, okay. Uh, so we'll start off, like I said, with a brief history of the ITC. What is the ITC? What is our mission, our purpose? What we do and don't do, why we exist, um, where IntelliCAD is used, and how does Carlson's support of the ITC actually help you? So, uh, well, there we go. So what is the ITC? The ITC was founded in 1999. It's an IntelliCAD Technology Consortium, or ITC as a nonprofit consortium directed by its members to share in the development of CAD technology. So we create an alternative CAD engine uh, and development platform and it's called IntelliCAD. So note, we're, we're not open source, it's actually shared development. You have to kind of join the club. It, it's, uh, there's a, uh, you know, a contract and agreement, members pay us to actually maintain the, the, the source and everything for IntelliCAD. So what is our mission? Um, we create a trusted platform that empowers our alliance of members to develop innovative solutions. And really the, the, the key word here is trusted. Um, as the members found their businesses on this platform, so they need to make sure that this platform is going to be there for them. So what is our purpose? Our purpose is to serve our members as directed. Uh, so we build a safe, trusted platform. We maintain the technology. We create new technology as directed and we provide tools and services to advance member development. Um, of course, there's a lot of resulting intellectual property, so we need to also make sure we protect that. And then we want to ensure that we have open access for all members for future generations to that intellectual property. So what do we do? Again, we create, license, and support technologies that make it easier for application developers, uh, which is our alliance of members, to create end user products for CAD markets. And we help members do that by providing tools, processes, consulting services uh, for large scale development that help members bring those CAD products to market. What we don't do, um, we don't generate profit for shareholders because we don't have any shareholders. We only have members. Uh, we don't sell any end user products as that would compete with our members. And we don't generate any revenue outside of our membership fees. And basically, we don't do anything that our members don't want us to do because they fund us and direct us. 
So why do we exist? There's a lot of CAD engines out there. Um, IntelliCAD was originally developed to stop AutoCAD from becoming a complete monopoly for native DWG editing. This was back in um, you know, the, the late 90s when IntelliCAD originally was created. The first shipment it was IntelliCAD 98. And other platforms continually compete with their partners uh, by creating uh, competitive solutions. Once you've, you know, you're, you're on a CAD platform, and this happened to, to my company as well. I had a company with a solution and Autodesk decided to get into that market. And so I was pushed aside and no longer a, a dealer uh, or a third party developer. So, um, when CAD platforms do that, it really pushes them to come work for with IntelliCAD because we're an open platform. Um, and basically, if major CAD vendors treated their partners and users well, then the ITC really would have never been created. So where is IntelliCAD used? Um, the big thing I always hear from people is like, well, I've never heard of IntelliCAD. Well, we don't actually ship any end user products. And that's why if you have heard of IntelliCAD, it's kind of a miracle in a way because there's not really just like a single IntelliCAD product. It's a, it's a platform. But um, our membership products, maybe you've heard of Carlson, of course, uh, Bricks CAD, SolidWorks, ZWCAD, GSTAR CAD, MicroSurvey CAD, FrameCAD, ArtCAD, TrueCAD, BlueCAD, WriteCAD, StabbyCAD, CMS, IntelliCAD, ProjectCAD, Cadia, TurboCAD, 4MCAD, ArcadiaCAD, Back to CAD, SolidWorks. These are all. IntelliCAD alumni. So how does Carlson support of the ITC actually help its users? How is it helping you? So they support this alliance of rebels, our, you know, our, the, the ITC team, who, who is working to help CAD developers deliver affordable solutions to users like you. IntelliCAD based products have freed millions of users and billions of engineering drawing files from a monopoly. IntelliCAD based products have increased competition, reduced pricing, increased innovation, and leveled the playing field for third party CAD developers. So, unlike other CAD engines, as an open consortium, we foster innovation and interoperability rather than block it. So, without the technology from the ITC and our sister organization, the Open Design Alliance, most of the competing alternative CAD engines that I actually showed on that previous slide wouldn't even exist today. So no matter what CAD engine that you're using today, whether it's AutoCAD or BricsCAD or, or IntelliCAD, whoever, the ITC has helped reduce costs and increase innovation in all CAD markets, which um, are benefits for all CAD users. So where is IntelliCAD today? Um, our latest release is IntelliCAD 10. It's a 64-bit Windows version that runs on a, uh, Windows 10. Uh, eight and seven. We have new geometry libraries, new graphics, of course, native, uh, as Jennifer was mentioning, native DWG editing. We can open files all the way back from 2000 to 2021. We also have native DWG editing now with, uh, uh, excuse me, a DWG version. It's DGN version eight. Um, dynamic input is one of the new features that we have. We also have support for Revit and ISC underlays, new architectural objects, uh, new import types, and many other additional features and bug fixes. So let's take a look here. Um, just gonna start up. This is uh, going to be Carlson 2021. And as you can see, it starts up here with the IntelliCAD splash screen uh, because it is based on IntelliCAD. And I'm just gonna open up a drawing file here. And what I wanna start off with first, just kind of go through the user interface a little bit so you can see what this looks like and sort of compare it a little bit to AutoCAD. And one of the first things you'll notice when I bring this up is that with Carlson 2021, it has all of these Carlson solutions that are in here. So it has survey, civil, hydrology, GIS. So there's all these different um, uh, solutions that Carlson actually has running on top of IntelliCAD. But I just wanna kind of cover the basics. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip this over and just go to the basic um, Carlson menus 
which is the typical kind of uh, IntelliCAD menu system. So we can just sort of look at the basics like a comparison to uh, generic AutoCAD. So let's take a look at the user interface here and you'll see, so we have you know, very similar things that you're used to seeing. You've got your app menu and uh, you can look at some of the things that we can import, STL, IGIS, um, DXF files, DGN, OBJs, uh, different types of file formats that we can export. Uh, we have a lot of different things that we can attach. Um, you know, uh, if you're interested in, in attaching images, you may think, well, do they have enough image types there? We have a few image types that we support. Um, I don't know how many that is. Uh, um, we've got uh, also the tools that you need for you know, publishing or drawing files, drawing utilities like audit, recover, purge, overkill, and uh, digital, you know, support for digital signatures, your typical options uh, that you've got. You notice here that we have the, the ribbons, but you go, well, you know, I really don't like the ribbons. I'm kind of a menu bar kind of person. Well, you can run with the menu bars if you want to as well. Um, you can run, uh, you know, switch back to the ribbon here. Let's say, well, sometimes I like the ribbon, sometimes I like the menu bar. Well, you can run them both at the same time if you want to, which I kind of prefer the ribbon. Now, I used to be, um, I'm, I'm old school, so I, I, I was really used to the menus and toolbars. And so I always ran with that, but I really like the contextual menus now that are in the ribbons. So I've kind of moved over to the ribbons finally, but I'm, I'm pretty old school. So we also have our toolbars that you can see here, um, tool palettes, which are great. Uh, properties pane, which uh, uh, also has um, uh, a nice uh, filter here as well uh, for the entity types. Um, we've got uh, your command bar, uh, so you can type in all these commands from the command line, obviously the status bar, which is kind of your typical things with, uh, you know, your snap and grid and uh, dynamic input, uh, ortho, um, you know, polar tracking, snapping and those kinds of things. Um, and of course, uh, you know, if you're working with AutoCAD, you're working in paper space and model space and you want to make sure that, oh gosh, does it support you know, annotation scales, um, got to have those. Uh, what about, uh, you know, it's, is it got, um, can it maximize and minimize my viewport? Yeah, I'm sure, no problem. Um, so pretty much the user interface is what you're going to get, um, is what you would see in AutoCAD. So you're wondering, well, you know, what's the format for this uh, user interface and can I customize it? Uh, yes, this is uh, just a standard CUI. Uh, file that you can customize um, like you can in AutoCAD. Um, we can bring up our um, CUI customization and you can see all that. It's a little slow here because Carlson has so many different solutions and stuff in here that it brings up. But um, you can see in here where you can customize all these different areas of the product, the menus, the toolbar, the ribbon, the contextual ribbon states, um, quick access toolbar, uh, shortcuts, aliases, double click actions, what'll happen when you double click on an entity. It's all here. You can transfer stuff from, um, you know, other CUI files into IntelliCAD or you can modify things here. So, uh, and you, you can also merge things. So when there's a new merge feature now, I know some of you have used IntelliCAD before, you've had problems with merging your, your CUI as you, you know, maybe have customized your older Carlson product and, and wanted to uh, to bring that in, you can do that. Um, I'm gonna go back here. I'm just gonna go back to the start page and I wanna um, just bring up an empty file. I'm just gonna scribble a little bit. I'm not actually gonna draw anything real, but I just wanna uh, scribble a little bit and just kind of show you just drawing some stuff um, in IntelliCAD. This is all, you know, looks familiar. You can see my dynamic input here working. So I'm just gonna draw some lines and a polyline so you can see it and a circle here. And let's go in and I'm gonna do a polygon um, and let's make this five sides here. Uh, and uh, that's fine. Whoops, I just screwed that up. Let's try that again. Polygon and our sides, I want five. And there we go. I just didn't pick my point. Um, let's, I'm gonna draw something else. Uh, let's go in and I wanna go in a 
show you a break line because that's kind of cool. Okay, so these are just kind of standard um, AutoCAD entities. And you can see from our draw menu, menu we've got all these different types of, of uh, in, entities that you're familiar with. Um, all the classic kind of, you know, line circle arcs. Uh, oh, I should maybe add some text too, just so you've got something. You can see some M text go in. Um, just gonna draw some text here. And uh, Something else uh, that's kind of cool, the contextual menus. So you can see we've got the contextual menus for uh, objects as well. So that looks familiar. But I, I wanted to show a, a couple things where IntelliCAD's a little bit different. Um, so for example here, you'll see with this polygon, there's additional some additional grips here. So in AutoCAD, when you, when you select a polygon, all you really get is just these corner grips. And it's just, it's not really a polygon, it's just a, a closed polyline. So you can see here, this is a polyline just like it is in AutoCAD. But notice you have these additional properties here. So I can change like the number of sides. Uh, I can change the inscribed radius or the circumscribed radius. It actually knows that this is an actual polygon. So here I can go through and I can, I can stretch it by some additional grips that are available. I can rotate it here. Uh, it's just a bit smarter of a polygon. And in fact, um, let's change this now to a, like a square, right? And so now we even have different grips. Look at this. We have grips that we can drag to actually keep this remaining a square. Uh, or if I if I take this one, I can turn it into a rectangle, right? It's just it's just a little bit smarter than your average AutoCAD, uh, you know, rectangle or or uh, polygon. Um, and then I also want to show similar functionality with the break line, because if you ever you know draw with the AutoCAD break line, you know how how dumb it is, and you always drives you crazy because you you're, you know you're trying to make it work and it but here with with IntelliCAD we have additional grips on this and you'll notice it is really just a polyline there's it's not a custom object or anything like that we just because of the way we draw it and we look at it we we can actually tell what type of object it is and so we can do some special things with it um, notice here normally if you're in AutoCAD and you grab this it, it doesn't rotate around like that <laughs> um, but um, notice here, if I come in and I, and I change, you know, I can use these other smart grips to, to get it to move the way that I want to as a grip, as a, excuse me, as a break line. But if I grab one of these other grip points individually, now I've just broken it. It's no longer a break line anymore. It's just a, it is just a polyline. And if you would have drawn this in, in AutoCAD, here's what that grip would do. See how it just comes off of the, the break line symbol and doesn't, Right. This is what you would get out of AutoCAD if you had created your, your break line um, in AutoCAD. So there are a few little things that we do that are, I think, uh, are a little bit different in IntelliCAD than what you would see in AutoCAD. And of course, you'll find some little things too that we don't do, and you need to let us know about those when you find them, <laughs> because I'm sure there's still plenty. Um, let's take a look at some of the other user interfaces. Um, here we have our drawing explorer that I've, I've brought up and it's actually currently on uh, the layers uh, element. But there's several different elements that you can see here. Uh, this is kind of like the, Auto, uh, the AutoCAD drawing center. Um, we can have uh, multiple drawing files here. Uh, I can go in and um, I can look at uh, the different layers that are in this drawing file. I can come over here and I can copy those. And I can bring them over into this drawing file and I can paste them in here if I want to. So um, those new layers are now copied over here. Uh, very similar to AutoCAD um, as far as the user interface goes because I mean, it's just a layer. It's um, data that's stored into the, the drawing file. But there's a few things that we do that I think are a little bit better. Like for example, materials. If you're working with materials in AutoCAD, you have to go through and use a, a different interface to add a, there's like a, a material attach command that you have to use to attach a material to a layer. But here it's just part of the layer explorer. So you can come in here and you can add materials right into a, through the layer explorer. So this is the Explorer. And then the other thing is that this is a modeless dialogue, you know, so we can actually come out here and, you know, we can do other things while this is up. 
but you may also want to dock it. So you've, we've got a, a docking feature here. Uh, the docking is similar to kind of what you're used to, so you can make it auto hide if you want to. Um, I kind of like to leave it undocked because um, what I'll do is I'll just throw it off onto a second monitor and so I can see it over there while I'm while working with uh, IntelliCAD in the main, main area here. But um, it, yeah, as you can see, I mean, things can get kind of cluttered and everything gets, you know, your drawing area all of a sudden gets really small. So, you know, you might want to use something like your clean screen to uh, which kind of remove everything. Maybe, well, maybe you work in your drawing area for a while and then you can come back and restore everything back to the way it was. And, uh, whoops, there it goes. Um, and, and bring that back uh, so you have your full user interface that you want to see while you're, while you're looking at it. Um, let's see here. Let's see, what have I... Let's draw a few 3D objects and show a little bit about the new visual styles. So I'm just going to erase all this. Um, and we'll just create some 3D objects. So just again, I'm just scribbling here, uh, drawing stuff really quickly because we don't have a lot of time. And um, Let's take a look at these. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at some of the, the new visual styles. I'm going to move this guy out a little bit so we can see him more clearly, not sitting next to that. Um, so let's take a look at some of our visual styles. We've got uh, conceptual, uh, very similar to AutoCAD, but these are new for IntelliCAD. We haven't had uh, support for some of these visual styles, um, you know, realistic. There's no materials that are assigned to this yet. So these all kind of look similar, um, sketchy. We've got uh, the X-ray mode. So um, there's several new visual styles here that are available, which is really kind of cool. And then also um, we've made some improvements uh, to just how we handle views, uh, the view manager now. This is modeless and it's, it's dynamic. Uh, so as you're making changes in here, it's going to be reflected into the drawing file. You've got a little switch here for that. Uh, but this makes it so much easier to, to work with this. I'll, I'll show an example here, like perspective, for example. It's got a nice little slider here, so you can uh, use a slider to sort of set your perspective mode rather than trying to, you know, like enter a number in manually, which is really kind of awkward. So um, that's kind of a cool feature. Uh, but let's jump to a different drawing file. Um, to kind of show some materials. I've got one that's sort of pre-started here. So we've, what, let's just kind of zoom out so we can see what we've got going here. Um, we just have some wall stores and windows and we have just kind of a phase for floor. I've got a, a light that's here. Um, as you can see, uh, it's got you know, certain types of uh, settings that, that no color is assigned to it or anything like that yet. And we just have a little chair um, that we've created here. And let's go and uh, take a look. We maybe want to change some materials here. So I'm going to go over to my Drawing Explorer again. Let's kind of resize this so we can see everything at the same time. And I'm going to go over and check out some of the materials that I have. Um, you can see from the uh, the materials explorer here that we already have a few materials that are in the drawing file but i'm going to open this up and i'm going to download or, or import um, a few more materials i want to do some carpet and maybe just a couple different colors of carpet here um, whoops using the wrong button oh, okay what's it doing here to get those in. Let's try that again. There we go. And I want to get some concrete in there. Um, let's do a couple of these guys. And I already have several different types of wood. I'm trying to think of other kinds of patterns I could put in. This will be enough for now. So I'm just going to close this up. And now you can see from the Explorer here, I've got a few additional materials that I can work with here. Like if I want to change this floor to carpet now, I could just take this over and just drag it out and I can see a new thing there. And I can go, oh, 
I like this wood pattern that I had. Where was it? This floor pattern was kind of cool. What would it look like on the chair? I could just drag that over there and see what it's going to look like on the chair now and try it out. Uh, maybe can check out the concrete uh, or this weird concrete pattern that I, I put in to try that out. Uh, so this is how the new materials work in IntelliCAD. And then also, as I mentioned before, um, if you look at the layers, you can also assign materials by layer just right in the, um, the layer dialog. So notice here the list of layers are available and I can just select stuff and um, apply it to a whole layer. Um, or, um, you know, you can select the object and you can also apply the layer through the properties pane, or excuse me, apply the, the material through the properties pane. So there's a variety of different ways to work with these materials. Um, uh, the Material Explorer is pretty handy to do drag and drop stuff. Uh, but typically, I also like to work with layers a lot as well because it's just easier to get everything on the same layer assigned a, a material. I find that's probably the, the most effective way to do it. But for demo purposes, the drag and drop looks really cool. <laughs> but in practicality, I like the layer method better. Um, Let's take a look at the light for just a second. Uh, we have, um, let's go over to um, our view, and we do have uh, different types of lights and stuff that we can we can um, add as well. But I'm just going to come up here and edit this this light, uh, and let's go through. Oops, did I get it? I did not get the light. There we go. You can see. The, the cone shape from the light, you can adjust that uh, cone with your grips. Let's uh, move this dialog out of the way. So you can you know change that with your grips. And then you also have um, the, the light intensity that you can change the intensity factor. Uh, you can change the color of your light. I'm gonna make it red here, which is really ugly, but let's just change it to something that's kind of a warm. I, I should use something really out of the true color, but I'm gonna just be lazy and grab a, index color instead so kind of a warm light maybe make that a little bit brighter um, so uh, this is it new new materials uh, new new uh, rendering functionality new visual styles uh, in the IntelliCAD engine um, we still you know we have quite a few materials that are available but we don't have a material editor yet so it's just kind of a static set so we will be working on a material editor for future releases. Um, uh, but we do have a pretty good set of, of materials that are available now. Uh, but it would be, be great to get feedback from, from users about uh, the materials, that, additional materials that they need or functionality that they need for this. OK, um, let's jump to one of the other new areas. Um, I'm going to flip back to this. And let's just erase all this stuff. And we'll go to a plan view. And uh, one of the areas that, that's new for IntelliCAD is uh, we, we have IntelliCAD 10 um, some BIM functionality. So BIM is uh, building information modeling. Um, I don't know how many of you have to or, or have need to work with BIM, but it's a classic situation where you know you've got a, a site plan that you're working on uh, doing some sort of uh, survey work or something and uh, it's because you need to you know clear an area for a new building and how are you going to get that building in um, so here we have uh, the ability to do import like Revit models or IFC models so let's go take a look at this um, so let's see where have I got this stuff um, BIM SIG Revit demo, and let's do this tactical school one. Now just pick a point here anywhere, we'll get that working. So yeah, it's a classic kind of scenario. You, you're working on the uh, site and uh, you've got to you know, clear space for where this new building is going in and the architect you, says, well, yeah, I've, I have a Revit file, you know? And you're like, well, I have a DWG editor how am I supposed to get a Revit file into a DWG editor, right? I, I can't do that. You can't do that with AutoCAD. Um, they want you to buy Revit. So, so you could export DWG files. 
uh, from Revit. So here what we've just done is we just imported a Revit model into IntelliCAD. So uh, let's turn this uh, visual style a little bit different here. Um, go back to my view. And let's just do the wireframe. So you can see the complexity of this model. Uh, you see all the stairways, there's furniture in here, um, all, all the curtain walls, doors and windows and all that stuff. And so um, this gives you the ability to bring these buildings in for doing your survey work, uh, uh, which is that way you don't have to depend upon the architect or whoever's working on the Revit file to actually send you the thing that you need. But like in this case, you, you look at the, the drawing and you think, oh, well, it's already got this stuff on it that, you know, we're, the, the, the architect did some sort of civil work already. We don't want to see that. So we can just go over to our trusty BIM properties pane here and we can select this guy. And all of a sudden all these properties, these categories, hierarchies, there's all these different ways you can control visibility. The, there's not really layers in Revit, but there's other ways that you can control visibility. So we can kind of come down here and say, oh, I don't want to see the parking. I don't want to see the plants. I don't want to see um, the topography. So we can just kind of turn turn those, those things off. Uh, so now all we see is the building, which is just what we want to see. And we can use that within our, our, um, our site survey work to actually make sure we get it set up to where the building is going to be located and parking and all that stuff. Now, this is, um, let's go back. I'm just going to erase this and start, start over. Let's go back to plan view. And um, what I want to show now is similar. We're going to go back and do another BIM import. So, or, or excuse me, a BIM underlay. But this time, You'll notice that it's not just Revit files, but it's also Revit family files. And it's also IFC files. So I don't know if all of you are familiar with IFC, but IFC is uh, Industry Foundation Classes, and it's from Building Smart. And Building Smart is it's like an interoperable file format for uh, AEC data. And so let's say your architect is working with something like Archicad or Tecla or some other um, architectural CAD application. Almost all of those CAD applications are going to have the ability to do an IFC export. And with IntelliCAD, you can also do an IFC underlay. So we'll go ahead and here, this is an IFC file now of a building. And we can display this. Let's go ahead and take a look at this from. Uh, we can do conceptual is kind of cool or realistic mode. Now, the IFC model is it's a completely different file format than Revit. I mean, the results look similar because you know that's still architectural objects. But when I click on this and I look at it in the BIM pane, I'm going to see different kinds of things in the BIM pane than I might see with a Revit model. But I still, excuse me, I still have the ability here to control my layers and or or my categories and things like that to turn things on and off with uh, with the BIM pane, uh, even though they're different uh, different model types, different drawing types, uh, different formats. Okay. Let's take a look at um, when we talk about uh, BIM stuff. Um, I think it also would be good to. Let me just go back to a plan view here. Whoops, wrong command. Um, I'm just typing stuff in here rather than, and let's change this over to wireframe just so we can kind of see a little clear what's going on here. Now, um, we also in IntelliCAD 10 have included, um, like let's say some, some uh, we've included some tools for creating AC drawings as well, uh, just directly. And these things like walls, doors, windows, stairs, railings, um, some steel, stuff like that. Uh, so that you can actually, if you need to school that architect yourself, you know, and actually draw something, you can kind of do that. Uh, if you want to um, 
figure out if that new file cabinet you bought is going to fit actually in your, you know, in your office layout. You can, you know, lay out your office and and uh, see how that new file cabinet is going to fit, stuff like that. So uh, let's take a look at some of the tools that we have for that. Um, now this is kind of unusual because these tools are, you know, they're for just drawing new things, but you can also kind of use these in conjunction with these, the ISC and the um, uh, Revit underlays. So for example, I'm gonna come in here, I'm just gonna make an elevation of this building. And well, well my bubbles are too big, but that's just a dim scale problem, but uh, I'm just gonna say no here. And I'll do an insertion point over here. And so now it's actually creating an elevation from this 3D model, okay, for us. So I use the elevation tool for these, um, for, for drawing with these tools, and it also works for the models that are imported from IFC and Revit. Let's just do a section through here. Um, okay. Okay, so we just cut a section through there as well. So it's 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 pretty cool what you can do with these. Now again, we can't edit this directly. Um, it's it's like an underlay, right? So, but we can explode it, and when we can explode this into, it'll be like meshes and. Uh, basic shapes, it loses all of its intelligence. So, um, you know, it'll, you'll, you'll be able to look at it and see that it's a window or whatever, but it's, it's not, it's no longer an IFC object. Um, you can see now as I move into 3D that these are all flat 2D. And these are dynamic views. So like if I come in here actually, and I change this uh, uh, view here, um, you know, say I make this uh, shortness up, um, it's gonna update this, this view to, um, uh, just show that part of that has been has been cut there. So this this part's been cut off, so it updates the view to to show that correctly. Uh, let's see what else. Let's go back to a plan view, and I keep getting the wrong command there. I still like to type stuff. Like I said, I'm old school. Some things I type, some things I get from the menus. Uh, let's just erase this, and we'll do a little bit of scribbling. How are we doing for time? Oh, not too bad. Um, let's see, I still wanna show roofs and DGN and backgrounds. I still got a few things to show here. I'll try to keep it within an hour. Um, so let's just scribble here a little bit again. I just wanna show some of the AEC objects, kind of how they work. Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, draw some walls here. Um, notice as I, I'm drawing the walls, these are automatically doing the intersection cleanups. Uh, got a lot of different types of doors, um, you know, single doors, double doors, uneven doors, um, bifold, revolving overhead. Uh, any type of door you can think of will be in here. And to, you know, add them, you just, uh, you know, grab it, select a wall, plop it on there. Um, once the door is in, you have uh, all your different types of uh, grips that can control your swing, and you've got properties where you can set the width. So if I want to change that to two foot six, whatever, I can do that. I've got grips where I can grip and, and move it on the wall. I can stretch it on the wall, whatever, they're all there. Um, same with windows, a um, lot of different types of windows, glider, single hung, awning, hopper, casement, pivot, curtain wall. Um, there's, you know, different shaped windows. Uh, so can you just grab the window that you want, select it on the wall, you know, place it where you want it, it automatically gets placed in the, as, as it goes in. It's uh, automatically going to um, do the intersection cleanup and, and uh, uh, take care of, uh, or like the, the, excuse me, not the intersection cleanup, but the, the wall cleanup. If you remove uh, a door, for example, um, the wall gets healed, you undo that, the wall comes back. If you look at this, you think, oh, it's only 2D, but no, it's all in 3D as well. Um, so it's all there. Uh, let's go back to a plan view. But in plan view, 
Notice you have a nice clean plan view where you're not seeing the header lines and everything in there for the, the doors. And so you get a nice representation of what it should look like in 2D. Let's go on to some other object types here. So let's take a look at uh, like some stairs. Um, pretty tough to draw a stair, challenging here. Um, we've got our spiral stair, which uh, yeah, you know, if you have to try to to, to draw this kind of thing yourself. Um, it's a nightmare. <laughs> uh, you've got uh, your, your different types of landings that you can deal with. Uh, uh, so yeah, looks cool. Now, when you select one of these, um, there's tons of properties that show up that allow you to make a bunch of different changes in the properties panel here, uh, you know, for all these uh, different types. And again, uh, these, when you you know flip your view, these are going to show up in 3D. So uh, not only is creating the 2D, but the 3D version of these as well. But when you go to plan view, you have that nice uh, you know 2D representation of these objects. So variety of different types of stairs that you can you can work with. Um, and there's also different types of stair styles that you can use in 3D, like wood housing, steel stairs, concrete ramps, um, different types of cantilever. Uh, so a, lot, a variety of different types of stair styles. Handrails, um, you know, you actually really have to draw these in 3D to really see what's going on there. So um, let's just come over here and actually kind of tilt that up a little bit more and grab one of these guys, like uh, see this, this guy here. And uh, you can see this goes uh, real quick. It's a nice 3D handrail. Again, it'll, that'll convert to 2D for you as well. Um, look at that in a different you know, style. So for conceptual, uh, let's go back to our 2D wireframe. Um, you can also do some interesting things with these, like uh, so if I create a polyline and um, I just go, oh, I wanna see this handrail. It's gonna look something like that. And um, you can go back to our draw. And uh, let's do, this is a guardrail. Oh, that's not a good example. Let's go. Um, oh, yeah, that's okay. Well, well, we'll do. We've got to do something different. Let's just use the guardrail. And I'm going to say down here, I can say convert. You can see it there, and just select my polyline, uh, and then just go through to erase layout elements. Yes, and. Did I not hit return there? Return, there it goes. And it applies that uh, handrail to the polyline. You can also do this with walls. You can convert a polyline into a curved polyline into a curved wall. Um, there's also, um, oh, like where do we have the curtain walls? I think that's here where you can, you can draw curtain walls as well. Um, and you can apply those to a curve. Uh, what else? Uh, let's take a look at, Let's take a look at the steel shapes. They're kind of cool. Um, every once in a while, someone has to do a little bit of detailing. And one of the things I showed earlier with like working with the polygons, and when you can stretch the polygons around like that, uh, like a rectangle, you can rotate it, and all the stuff with grips. Oh, that makes life with detailing so much easier. Um, here we've got a lot of different steel shapes. So you can show them in metric or imperial sizes. So we've got channels, angles, um, miscellaneous channels, tubing, um, S shapes, pipe, and th these are pretty pretty basic. So um, you just you've got all the sizing and information here that's actually in this uh, dialog, which is kind of helpful. But you just double click on it, uh, it drops your shape in there for you, and uh, you can just rotate it around, and it comes it's then built to that specification. Now these are actual um, they're custom objects, so they're a little bit smarter than your average uh, polyline. So if I come in and I start to drag this, notice the um, tooltip that's on my cursor. What this is doing is this is dragging, is changing that to match the data that's in that spreadsheet where this thing came from, okay? So it, it's not saying, well, you can just make some random piece of steel here, it's got to follow what I can buy. And so it's just dynamically changing here to match the sizes that are available. That's what that's doing. 
Um, and then you can also see in the properties pane, there'll be other information about this, uh, um, this deal you know, as far as the flange sizes and web thickness and stuff like that. Um, these are, uh, uh, like I said, it is a custom object. So it's a beam or uh, object, but you can explode this just be a, a dumb polyline if you want it to be, but you know, you can still trim and extend to it and all that kinds of stuff. And then also, uh, you can draw these in 3D too, so uh, which I didn't show. Um, let's grab something a little bit bigger. So, um, yeah, let's okay. So before I just did it in 2D, but um, just because I but I can make it in 3D as well. Uh, let's change our view again and just look at that conceptual, so you can see it. Uh, and then there's also other little detailing shapes in there as well. Uh, so some wood shapes, you know, joists and things like that. Um, like I said, and then some basic like uh, steel studs. Um, we have some companies that we work with like FrameCAD and, and, uh, and others that uh, use these kinds of uh, steel profiles quite a bit. Um, let's... How are we doing for time? Um, Jennifer, can I go over a little bit or? Hey, yeah, sorry, I had myself muted. Um, yeah, I, we've still got everybody on. Um, looks like okay. one has answered a question or two. Okay, let me, um, I, I just wanted to like draw a roof and maybe look at uh, DGN. Um, so I've just if they've given me a couple more minutes, I'll. I've got a couple more things to show here. So let's just load up this floor plan. And um, a couple things, I just wanted to show the combination of, um, I was gonna take a minute to bring this in. So I'm gonna erase this and I'm gonna erase this guy here too. And I just wanted to show Uh, dynamic input with AEC objects because it's just really, really nice. So here when I go to insert a door, right, I can quickly um, adjust this so I can see that that door now is centered in between the two walls. See how the dimensions are, are working with us here? So I can I can quickly lay that in there. And then when I go to put in a window, now here it was kind of easy because that's just the length of the wall, right? I mean, that's like, okay, well, just kind of but now we've got a different situation here where we've got the length from the wall, but then also how about the, the distance from the, the door, right? So you got even more stuff that's involved here that it's got to try to figure out with the dynamic input. AutoCAD doesn't do this. It's not the, their dynamic input is just not the smart with these AEC objects where you see all the correct dimensions that you, you, you need to actually lay stuff in the way you want to do it. Um, let's take a look at some stuff with roofs here. I'm, I'm just going to try to do something real quick. Um, roofs are complicated and um, messy. So it's, uh, you know, it's always fun to try to do that in a demo, right? <laughs> so let's go through and I'm going to start up the roof command here. And I'm going to turn my object snap on for this. And I'm going to just run around here. I'm not even going to zoom in. I'm just going to fake this in here with these snaps. And it's it's starting to try to draw the roof already. So it, it, it's working away, trying to figure out how I, it can make a roof out of this. And I'm just gonna run around and just give it all these points. Oops, come on. Free me up there, I wanna get in there. I don't wanna have to zoom in. There we go. And that guy, and that guy, okay. Oh, I missed one. Well, you you understand. I missed the point, but uh, I'm not going to redo it because we're we're running out of time. But let's take a look at this uh, roof that it created. You can see here, um, did that pretty quickly. This is not the pitch that I want. I don't have any overhang. I don't have. This should be a gable over here. So let's do a couple things to. Um, uh, oh shoot. I'll stop that. Okay. I did mention this was a beta, right? <laughs> oh, sorry about that.
Well, I won't go through the, the process of showing that roof again, but I was going to change the overhang and make one side a gable and I'll change the pitch and all that stuff for you. Uh, if, if anyone's interested afterwards, I can do that. But let me show real quickly. Uh, let's see here. We've got, this is a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to open up a drawing file here. And um, there's kind of something special that just happened that you probably didn't notice. Let me just zoom down in here real quick. And it uh, looks just like any kind of drawing that you would normally see. And we've got some you know, menus and stuff that came up. I'm going to turn off my menu bar there. And uh, I can you know, select things and do stuff. But what's different here is that this actually is a DGN file. This isn't a DWG file. This is a MicroStation DGN file that we just loaded in IntelliCAD as a native DGN file. And we just can go in here, we can erase stuff, we can draw lines, and um, we can do, oh boy, wow, I'm sorry. I, know I couldn't get through this with one, about one crash, but I was surprised I got two here. I have to do this again though, so I'm a glutton for punishment. Because I worked on this all day yesterday with not nary a crash. Turn my snaps off. Okay. So, as I was saying, this is a DGN file. Now, um, there's a reduced tool set because not all of the features that we have um, actually work in DGN, um, and DGN files are different. Uh, we do have, you know, like for the properties pane that shows up here, but for example, uh, DGN color palette is completely different um, than it is in DWG. So you're going to see some different things that, that happen, different types of entities are available in DGN than what you would see in DWG. Uh, but for the most part, you're going to get the, the, the type of feel, look and feel that you would as if you were working on this in a DWG file. Uh, there are some uh, for DGN users that they will find there's some interesting uh, functionality, uh, like for example, the selection filter. This is a big DGN feature that we've um, moved over to IntelliCAD. Notice here I can click on this and it's actually filtering out uh, things by color or I can filter things out by, by layer or um, um, object type and I can pull these into the properties pane and, and make some changes there within the properties pane. Um, so that's, these are kind of DGN features that you're seeing with the, the color palette and the, but this, this actually also, this filter, selection filter works in uh, the DWG version of IntelliCAD as well. But there's some really interesting things um, hey, that you wouldn't you have a quick second, I've got a hand up and I just saw it, but I'm not sure how long that hand's been up. I was looking in the wrong place. Sure. Andrew, I've, um, Actually, unmuted your microphone, so you should be able to talk to us. Andrew, can you hear me? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. I have a, I have a uh, two questions. First one is dumb, but the uh, up at the top of the of the demonstration, it says Carlson Survey 2021. But the, what, what's being demonstrated is more architectural. What, I'm not sure why architectural functions would be in a survey package. Okay, well, um, that's probably a, a question maybe for Dave Carlson, I think, um, because they, Carlson is including these. Th these are features within IntelliCAD that Carlson is including. And so they must have had some user requests for that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just... I'll let Dave uh, Carlson or Lena jump in too, but um, 
this is this is like running on top of AutoCAD. AutoCAD has a whole lot of pieces that are available underneath that you may never, you know, you may never get to. Um, so you've got two full programs that you're going to have. You're going to have the IntelliCAD underneath and everything that IntelliCAD brings with it. And then you have okay. some functionality on top. And then I'll, that, I'll let Leonard or Dave Carlson add to that. Okay, no, Jennifer, that, that exp or, uh, uh, Dave, that explains it. It's just that it's part of IntelliCAD. And I, I'm interested in the civil package, Carlson civil package, which will have the IntelliCAD so it also have this. I mean, I I, probably, I won't use this because I I'm just not an architect or, uh, yeah, I don't do architect. I don't. I wouldn't use it, but I see that it's available. Yeah, and so yeah, what you're going to have I, I think, one thing that's you know kind of a, a good way to think of it is you know Carlson develops on top of IntelliCAD, so you're going to have that basic information. Uh, one thing that you know for for instance, like the file menu that Dave Lorenzo is showing you here, that's going to be like the the generic, the basic IntelliCAD file menu. And then if you're running it with Carlson, Carlson's going to enhance that. In this version that Dave's showing you, you're going to have imports from different programs, um, like basic programs. But then when you go to the Carlson, you're going to see special things like importing land XML or importing civil 3D entities that Carlson's going to give you an additional update. Yeah, okay. I, I think the easiest way to think of is, um, this is Leonard, um, there are two flavors of um, two levels of IntelliCAD as it's given to the members, the standard and professional. Uh, and uh, these are some of the features of professional, what we include in Carlson is closest to professional. It's not 100% uh, what's included there, but um, we we try not to remove things unless there is a reason to remove them um, because well basically this is just a part of the base um, IntelliCAD functionality and then uh, Carlson features I build on top of that that's why and and in this case it's a, it says survey but that's just because David is currently in survey module uh, if you would have purchased a, a additional modules like civil when you switch between the menus, it would say Carl's and civil and so on. So uh, it's um, it's really uh, just happened to be a server module in this case. Got it. Okay. And then can I ask my second question real quick? Sure. And I don't need a long, long answer. I guess with um, because I I'm interested in getting the Carlson civil package, and I'm assuming that. All the a uh, lot of and I'm used to using uh, civil 3D, so I'm used to having a lot of the AutoCAD commands like properties, O snap, um, cut and pasting between drawings, uh, make current, and then area, uh, distance measuring, and isolate layers. I guess all that uh, IntelliCAD has the same thing, has the same right. command. Right, and also th this is worth mentioning. Um, uh, Carlson includes uh, AutoCAD. If you would have purchased a plain AutoCAD, probably harder to do these days, not civil 3D, um, it wouldn't have ability to um, display and uh, like display and display properties of civil 3D objects. Um, Autodesk has something called civil 3D object enabler, which you need to install. IntelliCAD includes um, all currently supported. Uh, civil 3D object enablers in the box. So basically it has a whole bunch of special um, well components uh, which correspond to civil 3D entities currently um, interpreted um, and that will work out of the box. You can turn it off um, if, if you don't want it, the, it's the setting, but um, they are included in the package. So you will be able to um, view and display properties of civil 3D objects as created. Um, on top of that, Carson has functionality for importing those uh, objects into Carlson style um, files and settings. Okay, yeah, I pretty much, I'm pretty sure I use, 99% of what I use is pretty much AutoCAD. It, with, I have the civil 3D, but I'm pretty much, I'm pretty sure I just use pretty much most of the AutoCAD functions and maybe the only civil 3D 
uh, command that I like to use is alignment, and I'm sure, I, I'm assuming that that would be in the yes, in the Carlson so, software yes, in, the past, yeah, in the past. Yeah, we went through that that recording I did a couple weeks ago on Carlson software, and I'm happy to send that to you afterward. Um, but I go through center lines and the roadways, and I do all that with grading and showed all that. Um, but, okay. But, uh, but don't kid yourself. If you use the civil 3D, it's full of um, stuff which you didn't want, but it's in yes. your drawing. Yes. Um, it, it's I believe that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you for explaining that. Yep. Yeah, it's just just to recap on that too. Yeah, I, I was just brought in to really kind of so, show the IntelliCAD stuff, um, and that's why I, when I started off right at the beginning, I turned all this extra Carlson stuff off. Uh, but it's all here, uh, just like we we mentioned at the start. You know, there's the survey, civil, um, hydrology. I just switched my um, my workspace right back to the Carlson workspace, um, and it all of this stuff is still here in the Carlson Survey 2021. But I had just disabled all of that stuff just to show the basic IntelliCAD stuff that comes with IntelliCAD uh, by clicking this little button here, and then all that extra stuff went away. So if you came to see all that stuff, I apologize. <laughs> I, uh... No, we got some good comments, Dave. So I mean, I think it's good to see. Um kind of how complete IntelliCAD is, um, that it is a, a very good comparison. Um, and it's it's hard for people that aren't on the software development side or been on the reseller side, like you and I have too, of really understanding there's two different programs um, and, and that you're just in a little piece of it when you're on the civil survey land development side. Like mm -hmm. Um, I, I think one question I have, um, and I don't know, this may be something you can uh, you can expand on, maybe Dave Carlson or Lena, either one. I, I know, you know, like dynamic blocks is a little bit of more of an advanced feature in AutoCAD. Not a lot of people use it. Annotative text is a little more advanced. Not everybody uses it. Where is IntelliCAD on those? And then um, what are, what's on the wish list uh, that you still have to get to or that you get a lot of requests or in progress? And again, that may come more down to uh, Leonid uh, on what they get for Carlton customers on the land development side. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have tons of requests, but we really try to implement the things that members are asking for. And that's one of the things I had kind of, you know, like what's next. And um, I think probably one of the biggest things that we don't have, like you mentioned, is dynamic blocks and tables. Tables are another thing that's missing that uh, seems to be requested a lot. Um, I, so, I, I, may be, I may be wrong. I think the display support of creation is not. Uh, that that's my that's my correct. Collection. Maybe uh, yeah, um, I'm a little fuzzy on that. Yeah, uh, you can do some kind of basic editing, but not as well as we'd like you like you to be able to do with uh, with tables. And and dynamic blocks are similar. There are some uh, editing functionality that we have for dynamic blocks, but we don't have the ability to actually. Uh, you can create some dynamic blocks with with IntelliCAD, but um, there's some complex dynamic blocks that we don't support yet. So uh, having a dynamic block editor would be um, important. I think what I saw, I guess it made me think about that was some of the functionality you've got built into like your doors and things like that. The extra icons and, um, I don't know what they're called now, the, the, it, looked, it looked very similar. Yeah. Well, one thing I wanted to mention about DGN that I didn't uh, finish up here was just that um, Lisp and SDS and some of the other APIs work inside of the the DGN um, drawing files. And so this is what Carlson is trying to do is to move their solutions over so that they work on top of DGN data as well as DWG data. And they're successfully doing that. I can't show the solutions, but they have Carlson solutions working actually in native DGN files. So you'll see more of that in the future. 
what other kind of questions do we have? Um, we had a question, Lynn, and you answered it um, in the discussion or the question box. Do you want to just mention uh, the question about the materials and? Yes. Um, so there was a question where were all these materials included? Um, they are currently not in Carlson 2021. Um, it's under consideration. This, it adds a considerable amount to the install. So we'll we'll figure out what to do about that. Uh, if there's enough demand, we can include it, or maybe we can make it available as a separate component. Yeah, it is pretty big to just throw that in the installer. Uh, so we we do have it set up in our installer as a as a separate component. Um, I I was able to, of course, I have the all the materials uh, uh, set up here, so I could easily incorporate that. And it's just part of the once the materials are here, then everything comes alive inside of Carlson. So um, yeah, you guys make a separate or even just put it in your regular installer, but make it as a Auto, AutoCAD also has it as a complete separate installer as well. So you might want to do that. Um, and again, this is my question. I'm keeping an eye out to see if we have any others. Um, so the Carlson ICAD, um, Leonid, that is going to be your standard IntelliCAD, not the professional, I assume. No, it, it is actually built with exactly the same IntelliCAD engine. It has a, a small subset of Carlson tools. So in, in that sense, it's closer to the tool set that IntelliCAD provides on its own. Okay, so, um, okay. So some of the things that you mentioned that aren't, I'm not sure I understand that. They would get more from IntelliCAD or not? No, no, no. no. Okay. It, it, the IntelliCAD portion is the same. Okay, uh, gotcha. Okay. I don't That's think we're limited uh, at all as compared to the Carlson 21 Pro. Okay, you're somewhere between. It's a small subset of Carlson commands, so it's closer to uh, what you get out of a box of IntelliCAD branded with a little bit extra as compared to um, the actual Carlson 2021. Gotcha. Yeah, and just for those of you on the call, um, you know, just whatever software you're using, um, you know, Autodesk has a free BWG viewer, um, TrueView, but it's very hardware intensive, um, and there's a lot of limitations to it. Um, it's free, so you get what you pay for, but if you're looking for just a very, you know, low cost, low commitment option. Carlson's iCAD, um, like Wayne had said, there's some Carlson tools that are you know user requests and they're meant to save picks and clicks as I like to say. So you get a lot of that with the with the iCAD program for you know, six hundred dollars. That's an option for somebody that's just trying to trying to find that low cost option. Um, are there any other questions? Okay, Dave, uh, Lorenzo, did you have more you wanted to touch on? Um, yeah, uh, one thing I did want to say before we, we wrap up is I just wanted to thank um, Carlson and their users for giving such great feedback to us to make IntelliCAD a better product. You know, we're really working hard to try to uh, make IntelliCAD the product that people want it to be. and. Carlson has really worked with us to uh, make some massive improvements over the years. And you as well, Jennifer, have, have given a lot of feedback and just want to say really appreciate uh, the work that you guys have done to give us the feedback we need to make a better product. And I encourage uh, your other users as well. Um, you know, even if you're an AutoCAD user, just go in, take a look. If there's a bunch of stuff you don't like, make a list and send it to us and we'll work on it. Um, and see if we can't earn your business. Yeah, I, I would like to extend my kudos um, both, well, three ways, to the users, to David and his team, and to Jennifer, because we're, we are able to make things work because of the user suggestions or, well, demands sometimes, uh, and um, we're being heard of at um, IntelliCAD, and things do happen because of that feedback. and. 
and this is a this is a rare um, uh, rare combination. Um, uh, you don't get heard a lot of times with uh, vendors, and uh, we appreciate um, that we can get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for this. Um, um, just a reminder, if anybody has any follow-up questions, you know, reach out to us. I'm going to post this recording out there. Uh, there are 30-day trials of everything, uh, no commitment on anything. Uh, if anybody has questions, Carlson, support, and Lana, do you want to just mention, if, if anybody has questions, uh, Carlson, support is free. Um, you're going to be routed usually through their office, their main office in Maysville, Kentucky, and then other uh, remote offices in Boston and elsewhere. Um, but questions about Carlson or in Telecast, um, if, if you're not limited, you don't have to have purchased. You can call and get free tech support during the trial, whether your software is current, whether it's not at any point. Correct. And uh, feel free to email me or Dave Carlson directly on emails were in the um, in the title page. Um, and, uh, and and me as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, are, am I good to you want me to switch back to my screen on that? Just sure. To, to show that once more. Let me get there. All right, there we go. Back on. All right, so do another quick scan. Any questions? Don't see any. All right, well, thank you guys. Um, like I said, we've got a, a good roundup, I think, of the AutoCAD side and the Carlson side a couple weeks ago, and then this. So, um, Put all this information out. Happy with any follow up questions and thank you everybody for attending. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jennifer. Appreciate it. Take care, everybody. We'll wrap up now. Thanks. Bye.